Good morning, Harbor. Welcome to the first episode of Harbor On Air. I'm Trey Rutledge. And I'm Megan Killen. Harbor On Air is a production made by students for students. We have a lot to cover today, so let's dive right in. Homecoming is right around the corner. Don't forget to show your school spirit. There are dress-up days September 18th through the 22nd. The homecoming parade is on Thursday. The game is on the 22nd where the Wildcats will face off against Bentonville. Tickets for the dance that Saturday are $10 before and $20 at the door. You will need your ID. If you are eligible, please apply for free and reduced lunches. This will also give you access to free ACT testing and other scholarships after high school. Scan the QR code on the screen. You can also find details in the weekly student announcements. If you haven't purchased a parking pass, you run the risk of finding a boot on your car. Warnings will be issued this week, then they will start placing boots on your car. Parking passes are 15 and are sold in the front office. Football hydration managers are needed this season. If interested, please contact Mr. Carroll. This is the new Islander Club Google Classroom code. They will be decorating for the homecoming float today and Thursday. Meet them in Miss Graham's room. In sports and other activities this week, Tonight, JV football takes on Rogers, golf is at Bella Vista, and tennis is at Bentonville High School. On Tuesday, golf is at Bella Vista, and volleyball takes on Bentonville. Wednesday, the junior ring presentation is in the PAC during advisory, and the back-to-school rally is at Arvest Ballpark. Admission is free. On Thursday, the college fair is in the Wildcat Arena at 10 a.m. for juniors and at 10.30 for seniors. Golf is at the Lynx, and volleyball plays Northside. On Friday, Varsity Football takes on Mustang, and volleyball is at Owasso. On Saturday, Cross Country is at MSSU, and volleyball plays Owasso again. Wow, lots of activity happening here at Harbor. Football season is in full swing under the direction of new head coach Brent Eckley. Coach Eckley was able to bring some familiar faces with him to Harbor at WCSN. Our sports production team sat down with the new coaches. It's not uncommon for an NFL coach to bring other coaches with him when he starts with a new team. That's exactly what football coach Brent Eckley is doing in his inaugural year with the Harbor Wildcats, as he's brought in coaches Heaton and Webster, two coaches that he's worked with in the past. Uh, 2005, I started teaching at Stockton High School, uh, and then two years in, we went to their, their playoff game against Nixa, and I was like, man, that's what I want to be a part of. From 2007 till probably 2011 or 12, uh, I was an assistant on staff. I was a pup. There was a lot of yelling and a lot of learning. But prior experience with Coach Eckley isn't the only reason Heaton and Webster wanted to coach Harbor football. Another factor was the Wildcats' rich history in the game. Tradition of Harbor was first. I remember even 2018, we went to Hendricks College for a seven on seven in Harbor at that particular time that you knew that rich tradition, I think, of this area um, in regards to Harbor. And in regards to me continuing to grow as a coach, uh, I didn't want to work for anybody else. I knew that this is where I wanted to be. Coach Eckley's ability to work with coaches who he already knows is already proving to give the Wildcats a huge advantage this season in an area where most coaches fail during their first year. So many times that without these two guys that I would try to communicate what I wanted to get done and nobody would know what I meant. If we have a certain setup on the practice field that we're wanting to try to get done one day, I don't have to tell everybody exactly what's going on. It's looking up for the Harbor Wildcats in both this season and the years to come, thanks to Coach Eckley and his unique strategy in bringing assistant coaches onto the field. For WCSN, I'm Trey Rutledge. Thanks, Trey. That explains some of the new faces around the football field. Speaking of new faces, we have over 30 new teachers this year. We thought this would be a great chance to get to know one of them. Don't worry, we'll be spotlighting many more in the coming weeks. Arling Locott spotlights our first new teacher. When the time came for Ms. Estes to start applying for a job, she knew exactly where she wanted to be. I always heard about how Harbor High set standards for other high schools in Arkansas. So when I decided to pursue my educational journey, um, this is where I knew I wanted to end up and to become a Wildcat. So I teach marketing management, marketing business enterprise, and personal finance, and I'm also the DECA sponsor. Um, I would say my year is going great. I love my students. I'm enjoying all of my classes and a lot of great memories to come. 
As much as Ms. Essays loved Harper and her students, everyone needs a break to enjoy the little things. During my free time, I like to do pretty much anything outside, whether that is hiking, kayaking, or just relaxing and, and spending time with my family. Thank you, Ms. Estes, for allowing us to get to know a little bit about you. For Harbor on Air, I'm Marlene Locott. Thanks, Arlene. It's great to see such bright new faces at Harbor. There's no shortage of choices when it comes to electives at Harbor. Recently, students in veterinary classes have been given the option to expand on their knowledge of dog grooming. Here's Megan to tell us more. Harbor has been introducing many new and interesting classes into the school day. One of those happens to focus on dog grooming. Actually, I've taught the veterinary science class for several years. So we're just actually adding to the curriculum. So students will be, uh, will be washing the dogs, will be clipping their nails, cleaning their ears, doing some hygiene things. And then some students will have the opportunity to go through the dog grooming certification program. Not only does this course teach students about dog grooming, but it also provides a place for everyone to be involved and play an important role. So we've partnered with uh, some of the special needs students. They'll come every Monday morning, pick up our dirty laundry, our dirty towels, our dirty scrub shirts, and they take them to their area. They have a washing machine and dryer. They'll wash, so they're learning how to use the washing machine correctly, how to use the dryer correctly. Uh, laundry is one of the life skills that they're learning in that program. The goal of this new class is to give students more opportunities to thrive after high school. Students will be able to take what they learn in this class and implement it into their futures in a variety of different ways. The safety of how to treat the animals. I'll use these skills in my future, just in case if I have a dog, he plays in the mud. This new class gives students all kinds of new lifelong skills they can incorporate into their futures. Who knows, maybe your next dog groomer will be a Harbor graduate. With Harbor on Air, I'm Megan Killen. Thanks for letting us know about one of Harbor's many extracurricular programs, Megan. On another note, we couldn't end the show today without acknowledging the horrific tragedy that took place on this day 22 years ago. Many of the people in this building were not born when the attacks happened, but thankfully, those who were sat down with us to offer insight on that tragic day. The CBS2 Information Network. This is breaking news. Good morning, Michael Pomeranz, along with Lisa Hill. Some breaking news to report. You're looking at a live picture of the World Trade Center where we have just received word that a plane apparently has crashed into the tower. You are looking at live pictures. Apparently, a plane has crashed into one of the upper floors. We're looking at a, obviously a very disturbing. There's a major incident in Lower Manhattan in the world. JFK, LaGuardia, all the way down to Philadelphia, and then IAH, Houston. And then 22 years ago today, we experienced one of the most tragic events in American history an attack on the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the American spirit. That is about as frightening a scene as you will ever see. People are running away from the area. There are firefighters and there are police trying to evacuate the area as quickly as possible. We've gathered three teachers here today at Harbor to share their thoughts and experiences during this time. So I was in seventh grade. I can remember like my seventh grade geography teacher rolling in a TV, if that ages me at all, like one of the giant rolling cart TVs, and just turning on the news and saying like something happened and it's something we all need to like be aware of. I remember staying at school all day. They sent, I usually rode the bus, and they sent someone to pick me up from school at the end of the day, and I remember there, there was like crazy lines at all the gas stations, like everyone thought that the world was shutting down. But like throughout the day it got progressively worse like as the towers collapsed. That's when it really like sunk in for me. So in my class, the very first year I taught, I was only four or five years older than the students. And so I had students that I remembered. We talked about their experience with 9-11. Um, it was something that was like emphasized and very interactive. As I aged and my students 
progressed, <laughs> um, less and less was about their experience with 9-11. Eventually I got to a point where it was like, they were really little kids when it happened. Um, and then I got to a point where I had like students that were like born right around that time period. And so we would focus a lot more on like what actually happened than their experience with what happened and I would have them interview their parents usually or people in their family that had experienced it to get those details. And then eventually I got to the point where it was like a historical event in the minds of my students. Like it was like way before their time. The closest that I think y'all have come to experiencing something like that was definitely like the shutdown. Um, in March of 2020, and we were told to stay at home with COVID. The feeling when 9-11 happened was very similar, like it was very much like unknown what would happen next, and it was scary as like a middle schooler to like have all these adults in your life that didn't really know um, what the future would hold, and it was also I think probably a little bit more intense. Um, there was war looming after it happened. With COVID being in our recent minds, it shows a new perspective on the feelings elicited in 2001. I was in my classroom at Bentonville High. So I'm in class, a student rushes in and goes, Coach, an airplane just hit the World Trade Center. And I just kind of went, huh, that's kind of weird. And because having lived in New York, I know the size of the buildings and how they stick out like sore thumbs. And so I turned on the TV and saw the second plane hit the second tower. And then, you know, because they first started talking about that it was an attack, and I didn't think it was an attack until the second plane hit, and then it became obvious that it was deliberate. The atmosphere at the school that afternoon as word basically spread about the other planes, the plane that hit the Pentagon and then the plane that uh, crashed in Pennsylvania. We had a, there was a hallway with all of these flags from all these countries and people started to rip them down. And it was a very difficult environment that afternoon. But I spoke to my wife about it and uh, it was kind of, um, trying to, we were on pins and needles. We were, we didn't know what to expect. Every year on 9-11, I watched the ringing of the bell, which is the memorial service in which they, they, uh, they announce the names of each person that was killed and they ring a bell. Her name was Danielle Burt. She played softball for me at Hialeah High School in Florida and uh, she worked in the second building and uh, she was able to evacuate the building when the first building was hit and um, she when they evacuated Manhattan she walked off of the island crossing the Brooklyn Bridge into Brooklyn her and thousands of other people were doing this as they evacuated the island it is something that's important to me um, not just the action but the reaction of it it's kind of part of me and so I, I get it, and I've taken the time and effort to try to understand why it happened, uh, both the action and the reaction. And so that's uh, something that's hard to deal with at certain times a year. Although this event was over two decades ago, it still feels like yesterday to many citizens across the United States. Oh, I was actually a manager of an athletic club at that time. Because I worked at the athletic club, I worked with another friend who her husband was actually at New York where he was doing training and he was in the hotel of the World Trade Center. We had a phone call to the club of all things and they kept asking for the other trainer. And I said, she's with a client, so I took the call and it was her husband telling us what was going on at the time, saying that we've been evacuated and I'm trying to figure out what to do. So at that time, I just grabbed the remotes and turned all the TVs to the news to see if something was on the news for New York. That's when we actually saw the second plane hit the second tower. 
um, I will admit, we both cussed a little bit. Um, um, I started thinking, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. So I was sitting there praying, thinking how, what's going on with these people. But our, both of our first reactions were, get the crap out of there. And he wasn't sure what to do. So he was like, okay, fine. I have nothing but my dress clothes for work. And we were like, don't care, run. So he literally ran all the way to the last ferry that was going to Jersey. I think the biggest thing is 9-11 made a lot of us more aware of things that happen in the world and not just our neck of the woods. That we need to be more aware of things globally and not just think that everything just relates to us. September 11th had lasting impacts on everyone across the United States, but we take this tragedy and use it as an opportunity to unify so we never forget who we are and what we come from. Thank you, Mars. What a moving story. And thanks to our Harbor teachers for sharing. That's all for the first Harbor on Air. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have a story you would like to see featured on our show, drop us a message on our Instagram or email Ms. Hamilton at thamilton at sdale.org. And follow us on Instagram at Harbor Wildcat TV. I'm Megan Killen. See you next time. I'm Trey Rutledge. Have a great week, Wildcats.